Hey everybody, Mac here. Welcome back to the show and welcome to December. If you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you know that I love Christmas, I love December. And if you're not a longtime viewer of the channel, hey, I'm slowly working my way to a thousand subscribers. Just saying. But today we have something that I'm sure most of you have seen already. I bought this in the summer when this line came out. This is Jazzwares Fortnite uh, legendary series, Slushy Soldier. I bought it in the summer, and I was like, no, I'm going to save it for December. I'm going to save it for Christmas. He's wearing an ugly sweater, for goodness sakes, underneath. So, we're going to take a look at this. Now, I know this is also on the tales of Jazzwares losing the license, and Hasbro gaining the license, and their first wave coming in. So, there are, I think, four Hasbro first waves for their their series. I forget what they call it. Their Victory Royale. That's it. Their Victory Royale series. But this one, I definitely wanted to save for now. I mean, look at it. It's an armed snowman, for goodness sakes. How could we not want to look at this? So with this, we have your typical Jazzwares packaging. I believe up here you see this was a Walmart exclusive. Large window. You can see all of the accessories on the inside, all of the guns, Everything you get with him on the side, just the artwork of the character. Same thing on this side, up top, a window so you can see down in. Ooh, got some dust on there. Like I said, bought it in the summer. On the bottom, Lee's. On the back, we have a rendering of the figure inside, and we have other figures that came with the line. Ghoul Trooper was another one that I wanted. I don't, I don't have very many of the Fortnite figures, but I wanted Ghoul Trooper, and I haven't found her. So I'm hoping that before the Jazzwares line becomes extinct, I'll be able to find her somewhere. But that's what we have, so let's not waste any other time. Let's get this open, and we will take a look at Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Series, Slushy Soldier. All right, friends, here he is, Slushy Soldier. Man, say that three times fast. Here he is, Slushy Soldier, out of the box, and... Uh, I think there's more cons than pros with this guy, but we'll get into that in a second for now. Let's put the tape measure to him. We'll see how he stacks up. And we see that to the top of his head, the top of his round head, he is just under six and a half inches tall, maybe six and three eighths. And to the top of his top hat, his little black top hat there, he's about six and three quarter. So... I don't have many Fortnite figures. I did, it wasn't a line that I really got into, but the ones that I do have, I got at the beginning of the line, and they all seem a little smaller than this guy, so I don't know if the line got bigger as it progressed, or if he's just a big figure, but you'll see in the comparison that the one that I have, Havoc, I do know he's taller than Havoc, but let's take a look at articulation, let's take a look at sculpt, and we'll dig right into this. Okay, so taking a look at articulation, let's take a look at his big round dome first. It can look up fairly well. It can look down fairly well. He has that full 360 spin. Not a whole lot of tilt going on, but it is a big round head, so it's hard to tell. Now, this piece right here, this is a very soft rubber, and they did that so that it wouldn't interfere with the articulation, and it'll bend and crinkle and get out of the way whenever you move his head, and that's cool, but... You can see that after just about an hour of playing around with it and getting some photos taken, that it's starting to bunch up and crinkle and starting to get stuck underneath his head, and it kind of throws the whole aesthetic off. So every once in a while, you got to play with that to just pop it back out. In the back, I'm not worried so much as in the front, but just play with it to get that popped out. His arms come up to there, very tight in the arms, very tight in the shoulders. I don't know if you can hear those detents crunching. He has butterfly joint in the shoulder, does a full 360. He has a bicep swivel right there, double jointed. Man, that is tight. Double jointed elbows that'll get you up to there. Wrists swivel, both wrists pivot in and out, um, which it's unfortunate. Those really should go up and down. Of course, he has his finger articulation. Now, he has a dumbbell joint here in the waist so that he can crunch forward. He can crunch back fairly well. I like how they kept the, the paint of the snowflake going. 
so that when it goes back, it looks a little weird, but you don't get just like a blank red spot in there. And he has a waist twist. He can twist at the dumbbell joint, but he can also twist at his waist as well. Legs are tight as well. Come up to there. Go forward. Go back. Thigh swivel. Double jointed knees with some decent travel. Boot cut where this shin piece is attached to the boot, so it turns with the boot. Ankle goes back. Ankle goes way forward. Forward facing pin. Whoop, forward facing pin for rocker. And boop. Toe articulation. Talking about the sculpt and the colors, first of all, just look at these colors. These colors really pop out. They really stand out. The blue and the reds, the 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 cream, the off-white for his shin pads, the white in the cuffs of his sweater and his carrot bandolier, and of course his big noggin, black for the hat, black for the belts around here. I think the color of this, the aesthetic of this, is just excellent. It looks great. It's eye-catching. You look at it and you, you immediately know that this is like a parody of Christmas. <laughs> I like how they have this snowflake motif going on, that he has it here on his ugly sweater. He has it down here on his, uh, is that like a secondary belt? Yeah, secondary belt there. And he has it on his uh, biceps right there. I like how they kept that motif going. I'm actually surprised they didn't put something on the back. I like how they kept that going. I love that his bandolier is filled with carrots and down here this doesn't come out it's sculpted in there but it's a carrot dagger and it's colored wonderfully as well like at first when I saw this I thought this was a separate piece that would come out but it's sculpted in there because how often do they paint sculpted pieces with this amount of detail and then on the side he has his snowman heads his snowman head hand grenades with little carrot noses coming off of them so you even have the carrot motif following through on this whole thing, and that is really cool as well. And speaking of carrot, his carrot nose right here is a very soft rubber, so that won't break, that won't snap off. And this carrot bandolier here is a soft rubber, and you can see that it's loose on his torso. But you also have his back peg right here, but the bandolier, let me see if I can show you, has a secondary back peg of its own so that it has its own peg to hold in there as well. And that is also really cool. Now, the sculpt, the sculpt is great as well. And it, of the few Fortnite figures that I have, sculpt has never been a problem. They even have, like, this patch sculpted in down here, and you can see the lines where it was sewn in. That's a really nice touch. The details on his double belts here, how you can see... Let's get your arms out of the way, slushy. How you can see, like, the holes going around his belt right there. That's really well done. I pointed out the carrot. I pointed out the hand grenades. The secondary belt, which I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be, but it looks good as well. Even the sculpting in here for his sweater. Armor, ugly armor, ugly sweater, whatever you want to call it. How this is all smooth. And you get a little bit of, like, metallic armor pieces down here on this on this one wrist i don't think anything over here but on this one wrist that gives you the idea that this is probably all just an armor piece now i don't play fortnite so i don't know what this character's deal is if he actually is a sentient snowman or if he's a robot or whatever but i think that's really cool that not knowing anything about the game or this character i'm intrigued about that and that like lets you think of a lot of things for him now the boots the boots are great with these big shin guards, these big elk knee guards that pivot with the boot and they get out of the way. And even like this heavy tread here on the bottom. Jazzwares for the Fortnite line, for the most part, did a really good job paying attention to the little details on the figures. What I don't like is how stiff the articulation is on this guy, that it really made him hard, especially depending on which accessories you put him with, which we'll take a look at in a minute. It really made it difficult for him to get into any decent poses because I felt like I was fighting the joints the whole time. Everything on this guy was so stiff. And I don't know if that's just mine or if that's the way that Slushy came out because I don't think I had this much problem with Havoc when he came out. 
but that is a little bit of a bummer, all of this stiff detail. Taking a look at accessories, the first thing we're going to look at is this harvest tool, and I love this thing. Just a big, deadly icicle. I mean, it's supposed to look like a hammer and pick, that's obvious, but the fact that it's just a big icicle, oh, I love that. That is... That is really cool with this translucent blue here. And I'm actually surprised, considering the nature of the character, that this is the only really translucent blue piece that comes with him. Now he has his back bling as well, which is a wreath with a machete through it. And this looks really cool. I'm surprised they didn't paint the middle of the wreath like black or something to uh, represent like the, the opening in the middle of the wreath. But I think the sculpt and everything looks good. I think the colors look good. And with this green it adds another color to Slushy Soldier. Because let's take a look at him here. Slushy doesn't really have any green on him, except that little green sprig on top of his uh, top hat. So that helps to accentuate that and set it off. And it just fits in the back. Once again, that is a really tight fit. And it doesn't go in all the way, at least not if you look at it. For, well, I guess it does. It goes in further than I had it before. But you can see that there has to be a little bit of relief there to get the bandolier across it. And you can't really see it too much from the front except for the handle of the machete. But yeah, this this looks good. This like helps complete the figure, really sets him off. And like I said, this this new color accenting the sprig on his hat on his hat, I think looks great on him. Now with Slushy Soldier, you get a decent variety of guns to go with the figure that you have four right here. One is a grappling gun, one is a submachine gun, you got a shotgun, and then you have this sniper rifle that I almost wish they hadn't put it in and they had put in maybe one of the other Fortnite weapons for the six-inch figure. Because if you take a look at this, especially when you put it in his hand, this is designed for their three and three-quarter scale Fortnite figures that I don't know why they included it with slushy here. Because you see this, if you bring him in and we open his hand... And that goes in there, and then I guess you put it in there as best you can, but that is quite obviously not designed for a six inch figure. That is definitely made for the three and three quarter line. Now the remaining ones that he has are really cool. They're very cartoon looking, very cartoonish, very video game. So they don't, for the most part, fit in with like say your G.I. Joe classified line because this just looks too, tar too cartoony. But for this line, for Fortnite, it looks fantastic. I love the sculpt on it. I love the paint apps on it. I love the detail work on it, how it's a little beat up right here, like it's seen some action and it's been dropped a few times. I really like that. They did a really good job on these weapons. You even have the slide pin right here, that it almost looks like you should be able to slide it back and chamber around. The silver against the tan looks really, really great. The other one that we have down here that I like is this shotgun. And this shotgun you might be able to fold into like your G.I. Joe line or the Punisher or something like that. Especially, whoops, especially because unfortunately of all of the weapons that he comes with, this one is the biggest bear to try and get into his hands. And I don't know if it's because the trigger guard isn't connected and his finger doesn't actually wedge in there. Because with the Jazzwares figures, as you saw, as you know, you have these hinged finger fingers right here that make it difficult to hold a weapon. However, if you take this little submachine gun here and you pop it in, get in there, and you get his finger wedged in the trigger guard, that the pressure of holding it, whoops, wasn't in there good. I had it in there, I swear. That the pressure of holding it and everything fitting together and being wedged in there together makes it stick in his hand fairly well. There we go. Makes it stick in his hand stick in his hand fairly well. However, with the shotgun having this open trigger guard, it doesn't want to stay nearly as tight. And then when you try to move, you see that then when you try to move the wrist to twist the wrist back, the fingers pop open and then the weapon falls out of his hand. And that's a shame because he would have looked really cool, especially with these carrots on the bandolier like shotgun shells. He would have looked really cool with this, but it's just hard to get him into any decent poses holding the shotgun. 
Now, another one that he comes with, and we've seen this before, is this grapple gun. And just like the machine gun, the grapple gun fits wonderfully into his hand. And finally, I almost forgot about it, he has this canister that is supposed to be some sort of potion, or shield generator, or magic, or something. Some type of grenade, I'm assuming, because he does have this slot in here that you can fit his fingers into. And once again, this one doesn't do it as well as some of the other ones do. I don't know what if his fingers are curled differently, if they're sculpted differently, or what. But you can see that he does get a grip on that, and he can hold it. And he can actually get some pretty decent throwing poses out of it, too. So that is... I don't know what that is, but it looks cool because I do like the coloring of the dark blue... Focus in. Oop of the dark blue gradually fading up into the light blue and then the silver for the lid and the clasp and then this little purple tie on back right here that for such a small item it looks great even though I don't know what its significance is in the game. Now for size comparison here he is with fellow Fortniter Havoc and like I said Havoc he's shorter the legs are about the same size but his torso is really shorter and his head his head is very small, that he's just shorter than Slushy. So I don't know if Havoc's short, if Slushy's tall, or if this is just the evolution of the line. Here he is with G.I. Joe Classified Cobra Trooper and Snake Eyes. Here he is with McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat 11 Scorpion and DC Multiverse Azrael. Here he is with Lanyard Toys Xenomorph Drone and City Hunter Predator. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a way to foil IR? And finally, here he is with Jazzwares, Wicked Cool Toys, Spartan Collection, Master Chief, and Cat. So let me just start by saying that I am kind of sad that Jazzwares is no longer going to be producing the Fortnite figures. I know that sounds weird, considering I don't collect very many of them, but Jazzwares really nailed this, this goofy, this cartoonish, but lethal aesthetic that is inherent to Fortnite. And I don't know if Hasbro is going to nail that. Don't get me wrong, I do not doubt Hasbro's ability to make a decent figure. They're Hasbro, they're the second largest toy company in the world for a reason, and they do put out really good stuff. But just because you're the biggest doesn't necessarily mean you're the best for a certain line. I think Jazzware and Fortnite was a great combination. I mean, they, we've only seen four figures from Hasbro so far, so we'll have to take a look at that, wait and see. Now, as far as Slushy Soldier here, I like the aesthetic of the figure. I like the sculpt. I like the color. I like everything visually about him. The joints are a little stiff, that that's going to take some breaking in. Those detents are really stiff. I'm sure you could hear them over the camera, or oh, clicking, um, whenever I was trying to move him. For me, I think the biggest fault of the figures, and this is the whole line, is those articulated fingers. That he can't, the figures can't grip their weapons very tightly. And over time, those finger joints, those hinges in the fingers are going to loosen up. And there will come a time where they just won't be able to hold their weapons at all. And that is a shame. Other than that, I think if they would have done something with the hands, they may have... I don't know, maybe endeared themselves to fans a little bit better. If they had put more traditional hands on them, maybe they wouldn't have lost the license. I don't know. I don't know what the particulars are of why they lost the license. But I know a big issue for a lot of people with these figures, no matter how good they look, was the articulation in the hands, in the fingers. He's going to make a great decoration for Christmas. And after all, that's what this month, for me and this channel, is going to be all about. So... We will be taking a look at more stuff throughout the month. We will also be doing our nightly advent calendar opening. I got Harry Potter this year, so keep an eye out for that. So until that happens, play well, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, Merry Christmas, and as always, thank you for watching.